It's always the ones that don't have any children. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time. What's up, everybody? I'm Keisha King. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I wanted to talk about the Kim Iverson and Matt Walsh beef that's going on. I came across a Black Conservative Perspective um, video and his, or his interview with her, and I had kind of heard about the beef, but I hadn't really had a chance to check it out. So I watched it, and I wanted to give my reaction. There are many things that I need to say about this. Let's get into it. Before we get started, go ahead, like this video, share this video, subscribe to this channel. Let's grow this channel. You know, I be dealing with the suppression and stuff, not oppression, but suppression of my channel and my content and my social media. So please like, please share, please subscribe. Let's get started. Well, yesterday, Matt Walsh from The Daily Wire and I got into an exchange about a hot button topic that is sure to set people off. It certainly did on Twitter, but Twitter isn't real life. The reality is, I think most people have a nuanced take when it comes to this particular issue. It's not so black and white for most, at least that's my opinion, but I could be wrong. The discussion, or rather the evisceration, was about trans teens and top surgery. Now, top surgery is breast removal, which for many of us is drastic to think about. Matt has made much of a show about trans and gender issues and the growing concern many parents are having that their child is or will be indoctrinated or groomed by woke liberals. Now, I don't discount this feeling, and I agree that the trend is concerning. I do think for many youth, it's trendy to declare themselves as non-binary or trans or what have you. There is data to back this up. And it's also concerning that so many adults and those in the medical professional seem to be running away with this rather than questioning it, pushing back, and understanding that for most of these youth, they will not be trans in their adult life. But I also believe in medical autonomy and the ability to make our own medical decisions, not just for ourselves, but for our children. I don't think it's the government's place to intervene and tell me what is or isn't best medically for my child when I have the agreement and approval of many medical professionals. We saw this throughout the pandemic. Many parents were demonized for being unwilling to vaccinate their children. They were being told that their children would not be allowed to go to school if they did not do what the government deemed to be healthy for their child. I'm not in agreement with that. I believe people should have the ability, so as long as they have some medical backing, some medical professionals, uh, a team of other people, and also consent amongst all of the guardians involved, I believe people should be able to make their own medical decisions and the decisions for their children. Now, many mischaracterized my stances on this issue, and as my former co-host of Rising, Brianna Joy Gray would often say, argued in bad faith. However, not all. Some understood that even if they didn't agree, and I want to have I want to have that discussion today with one of these people, we could still disagree and have a discussion and not go into what I would call cancer, cancel culture. Greg Foreman is the host of Black Conservative Perspective on YouTube. And he's made a video about this exchange. Greg, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Hey, how you doing, Kim? Thanks for having me. So I, I really, you know, this has been obviously something that blew up on on Twitter. Um, Matt Walsh now even saying, you know, very much coming after me. Not, I, I would say, not engaging in an exchange. I felt like it was more of an attack. I thought that was a little bit hypocritical coming from. A lot of times what I seem to gather from many people on the right, especially coming from an outlet like Daily Wire, that they're willing to have conversations, they're willing to engage and try to understand the other perspective. Um, but I appreciated your video on it in particular. You did a video on this yesterday, and you say that you're a fan of both Matt and I. Yes, that is correct. And I felt like... So first off, let me just say, I find it funny that she is saying that, you know, they won't engage with, uh, Matt won't engage with her when it looks like, I mean, they were engaging on Twitter. Like that's where this came from. He made a comment and she made a comment. They were going back and forth on Twitter. So it's not that, I think that's not all the way true. I mean, he was engaging. He just does not agree. And most people with kids don't agree. And just in her opening, you know, she's making it like, oh, well, it's just, you know, it's pretty much just like the vaccine. You know, if you don't, it's bodily autonomy and you can just do whatever you want to do with your own body. And it's just like, you know, when parents didn't want their kids vaccinated, you know, if parents want their children 
children's body to be um, uh, mutilated and cut up, then that's fine too. I'm sorry. No, it's not. It is not okay. And this is probably why I'm not a libertarian because I believe that there are things that just because you're not doing it, it can affect if, if when that thing grows, it can affect others in society. For instance, um, you, anybody can say, oh, I don't believe in marriage. I don't want to be married. But when that sentiment grows and it is promoted in society, that is damaging to society. You understand what I'm saying? Or if, you know, you're like, okay, well, you know, you should just be able to use heroin because a lot of libertarians are like oh if you want to just ruin your if you want to smoke crack then smoke it up you know but some of these things while i understand the the, the sentiment and you don't want government to in, encroach on your rights some things affect society in such a way that it ends up affecting you when a bunch of people start doing it like children going to cut off their body parts and parents consenting to that so most parents don't support their children being groomed by pedophiles. But if a growing number of parents started to say, you know what, it's okay if my six-year-old is, you know, being sexually active, you know, God, that is, I mean, just me thinking about it, it's just crazy. If that sentiment started to grow, that would be a problem in society. And yes, we would need stronger laws or something. We would need... So the government to come in to protect rights of people children it's 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 almost like we have to have guardrails around certain things that people will do everybody is not sane just because a doctor agrees with it, just because a, a parent agrees with it does not mean that it's the right thing to do and when these things start to grow in society it's a problem Let's continue. You gave the best um, breakdown of this, where you did not mischaracterize my viewpoint on this. You instead understood that I was coming from a libertarian, a medical freedom perspective on this, whereas you align on this particular issue with Matt Walsh. You are a conservative when it comes to social issues. Is that right? Yeah, particularly when it comes to children. I'm, I'm probably more in agreement with, with you when it comes to adults. Okay. But what about, so when it comes to children, well, first I want to go through some of the, I want to go through the exchange first before we get into more of the opinion about this, but you did a, you did a breakdown on your channel. I want to show some of the, the screenshots from your segment on this. So here is uh, the first one here. This one is, this is the actual tweet from Matt Walsh. So this is, let me introduce you to Dr. Scott Moss. I'm sorry about the screenshot with the way, <laughs> the way your face has uh, been framed there. Sorry about that. Uh, it says, let me introduce you to Dr. Scott Mosser, who cuts the breasts off of adolescent girls. Many surgeons across the country will and do inflict top surgery on minors. Uh, on minors. Mosser assures us that he follows very strict guidelines before performing double mastectomies on children. So first of all, I just want to say, you know, that is obviously uh, shocking, right? I think many people, they see this, they hear this, they see photographs of teens that have had the double mastectomy, and it's, I mean, it's incredibly shocking. Um, so I understand the emotion behind it. I understand the shock behind it. So, but, so you, what is your take on this particular, on this doctor and this, uh, this, this surgery, first of all, when you see a tweet like this? Yeah, well, my take on it is I'm not very surprised by it because I basically talk about this stuff a lot on my channel in which you do have these doctors in these hospitals, some of these hospitals, these children hospitals saying they, they don't really do it, but they actually do, where they are performing these surgeries on kids. Now, they say that um, the age that they do it is is, is, is 16 when it comes to mastectomy. Now, they claim they don't do um, other procedures like you know, um, removing a woman's reproductive system uh, right. or, you know, cutting off the, the, the male penis. They don't do that until they're 18. Right. However, there's been some evidence to suggest that they might not necessarily be um, very honest about that either, right? So when I see something like that, what I see when I actually watch that interview um, of that guy in the video, 
He's basically saying, look, this is where we're going to be in 30, 40 years uh, when gender is not a real issue, right? When society is not arguing about it the way we're arguing about it now. So I'm going to go ahead and get ahead of it. And I'm going to perform, you know, these procedures on children as young as possible, whether it be 11, 12 year olds, uh, including cut off, you know, parts of their bodies, giving them hormones, you know, puberty blockers, uh, things that are irreversible. Um, and, you know, I, I think that, in my opinion, that's just irresponsible from a medical perspective because these kids don't really understand exactly what they're getting into. And not only do you have parents pushing this on kids, you also have, you know, doctors, psychiatrists, therapists. They're also doing it as well, too. And I think that there is a, um, a lot of um, kind of uh, capitalistic kind of interest going on here in which there's a new market for kids that want to transition and i think that it's not something that's happening naturally i think it's happening because there is a profit motive here and i think that doctors and therapists are exploiting that and i think that's why you're, that's part of the reason why you're seeing this yeah. explosion in kids that are seeking these these treatments when you know 30 you know uh, even 20 30 years ago this was not a thing yeah i mean i i 100 agree with you that this trend is concerning as far as the really, I, I, I don't, it's not to me concerning that kids are coming around being like, I'm binary now, or I'm the other day. I mean, I think we can expect kids are always going to rebel against their parents. They're not, there's always that period of time. I think that a teen's life where they don't know who they are and they're trying to figure themselves out. They're going to say they're one thing or another. They want to be something or something else like when they grow up or something. I think that that is normal and natural and that should be expected. And parents should expect depending on when they're raising their kid, the generation they're raising their kid in, that their kid is going to be proclaiming whatever that fat is of, of that era. And parents need to be able to combat that. And parents need to be able to understand and recognize this is a phase, you know, and pick and choose their battles a bit on that. But I do think where it gets concerning is when the adults then join in on it. And that is to me where it becomes more concerning when you've got the teachers, the medical professionals, and they're then saying, you know, they're, they're not just understanding that this might be a teen phase or the trendy thing. They're instead saying, oh, then you are, and we must do something about this. I agree that that's completely concerning. And that to me is really where I think the concern is when it comes to that particular issue of, you know, kids coming out and saying that they're non-binary or trans or something. But I don't know if I... It's not just concerning, it's wrong. It is wrong when you have children that are coming out and saying this and parents and teachers and counselors are affirming the thing. It's not concerning. It is wrong to do. It is harming for the child. It is harming for, we'll get more into this as we go, but it is harming a person with a mental illness. Why would you cause further harm to a person who has a mental illness. It is not just concerning, it is wrong. I agree that this there's this, a profit motive behind it. And the reason I would say that is because this is such a tiny group. There isn't an, an enormous, I mean, this is very different than, you know, there's, there's plenty of other, I think, surgeries or procedures that would affect the masses. I mean, we see this with like the prescribing of antidepressants and things like Adderall, even nose jobs amongst teenagers is much more prevalent than something like a, a child saying I'm trans and I want to now go into the, to the level of getting puberty blockers and, and even then surgery, which is another layer on top of that. I mean, the stats show that it's, it is concerning. It's high, right? In the adult population, it's 0.5% of adults are trans. So it's a very, very small percentage of people in the child population in the adolescents under 18, it's 1.4. So clearly there's a big difference between one, it's three times higher, 1.4 to 0.5. That means that most of these kids are likely going to grow out of it by the time they're adults. They're likely, their gender dysphoria, if they truly are suffering from that, will uh, resolve itself by the time they hit adulthood, which is why you wouldn't want for the vast majority of these kids to even begin undergoing any sort of treatment like this, right? Because you would say you're most likely this is a gender dysphoria thing. It happens. It also resolves itself naturally, often, most of the time. So I, so I don't know, you know, when we're looking at such a small percentage of kids, I don't know if I would agree that it's 
that there's a big profit there to be had. Well, here, here's my challenge to you on that. I, I would say that as of right now, yes, the market is small, but... Um, First of all, before she starts saying, talking about the stuff she needs to realize, look at all the gender clinics around the country now. Now, so as you can see, it's a lot. There are a lot of gender clinics that are popping up all over the place. This is a huge uh, moneymaker. And the people like uh, Scott Nugent, who's a trans man, who will tell you it's they do these surgeries at $70,000 a pop and then you are forever dependent on them, which uh, Greg from Black Conservative Perspective is going to get into. It is a huge industry and it is growing and they are trying to get as many kids in this so they can have you on their rotation for as long as possible. And it will be for the rest of your life. You know, Pew Research has shown that with each new generation, kids are becoming more, I guess they're identifying more with LGBTQ, right? They're identifying more with these, you know, identities, these gender identities that are being put out there. So it's not even that they are, that kids are just, you know, trying to figure out who they are. They are starting to identify with these alternative lifestyles that if it were not pushed on them, if it were not introduced to them, they would not be doing this. Kids are being exposed to this. It opens their mind to it. And then, then they want to go do it. Most of these kids, if it never would have been exposed to them, they would not be interested in it. That's just a fact. And what is happening is, is that people are basically saying, look, if you show any signs that you have traits that could align with the opposite sex, right? Let's say you are a young girl and you like G.I. Joe or you like to play with Power Rangers and do things that are traditionally more masculine. You're a tomboy. What happens is, is that they're now saying, look, um, you may actually be transgender, right? And I think that's the problem. I don't think it's just a fad that is happening in, in schools where, you know, kids kind of go through a phase. I think for the most part, that, that's what it is. But I think that the problem is that you're, you're seeing it happen more and more and more and more kids are becoming a part of this, this group that includes going through um, some of these therapies, taking these puberty blockers, and then eventually transitioning into surgery. I think that, you know, uh, apps like TikTok, you know, social media has very much influenced these kids in regards to, you know, trying to identify with this, this ideology, this group of people. And I, I think that is what is leading to more kids coming out and doing this. And I think that a lot of these medical professionals, these therapists are saying this, and they're saying, well, you know, hey, why push back, right? Like, I mean, at the end of the day, you can make money off of it. And I think that as of right now, the market may be small, but in the future, you know, like that doctor was saying, hey, you know, 30, 40 years, right. hmm, this is yeah. not a conversation anymore. Yeah. And I mean, I definitely disagreed with that doctor. I, I don't have the clip to share, but I definitely, you know, him saying in the future, 30, 40 years from now, gender won't be, you know, we won't be discussing. He's kind of thinking that people will buy into the idea that there's that gender, that there's more than two sexes essentially. And it, I just, I, I'm not sure if I agree with him on that. I guess the time will tell um, on that for sure. But, you know, also it might not be there. They're doing it on, you know, large groups of kids. But they are doing it. And the more society comes into agreement with it, the more people are going to be exposed to it, the more they're going to want to do it. But I, so let me just go ahead and go further with this, with, the, with what you brought up on your channel here. So here, is the, here was my response to Matt Walsh. I said, it's their, it's their body, their choice. If their parents or anyone is pressuring them, let them live with that and take it up with them later. It's none of our business how others choose to live their lives. Wow. That's that libertarian stuff. If, if, a, if children wanted to cut themselves, which children do, they are, there are children who are cutters and they want to do this. We don't say, oh, well, you know, it's your body, your choice. Go and just cut away. We would never say that. What the heck is wrong with these people? We would never tell a child who is having problems and they are cutting themselves. It's their body, their choice. 
if their parents or anyone is pressuring them, let them just live with that and take it up with them later. You know, you cutting on yourself. If your parents are cool with it, let's just leave it alone. Why do we even have guidance counselors? Why do we have counselors? Why do we need all these mental health counselors? What is the point of having these people who are supposed to be professionals in mental health if we're just going to say, you know what, if you want to do it, if your mind ain't working right and that's what you want to do, go right ahead. Good God, Kim, girl, what is wrong with you? So obviously uh that was what set off quite a bit of a, a, a bit of a storm there's another comment that i made that we'll get to <laughs> that's uh, that set off even more but i appreciate at least that you know you seem to understand i'm coming from a medical freedom or a libertarian perspective on this i guess my question would be what is your what would as your as a conservative on social issues what would be your solution to this. So are you looking to ban this procedure entirely for youth? Yes. <laughs> yes, we would need to ban the ability for kids to cut off their perfectly healthy breast, to alter their genitals, to take puberty blockers because they want to be another gender, which is not a real thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that the uh, solution is just to wait to 18. And this is, again, why I, I try to be very careful when I when I say this. I'm more of a libertarian when it comes to adults. I'm not trying to ban people from being trans. I'm not trying to, you know, get rid of right. gay rights or anything like that or reverse on gay marriage. And I can agree with that. If you are an adult, even though I don't like it, but I would strongly still speak out against it because I would never want something like that to just settle into society where even if... If a person is a, is mentally ill and they are uh, trying to do things to themselves, they're in a delusion. Basically, they 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 are they are firmly fixed on something that is not real. Um, that's again, that's why we need mental health counselors and, and therapists and psychiatrists. So you can say, okay, you try to help that person work through that problem. You don't push them further into the delusion. We would never do that. That's just like if a, if a, little, if a girl or if, if, a, if a child was anorexic, uh, anorexic or a person, an adult, if an adult was anorexic, you would not be like, yes, just continue to not eat. You're 85 pounds and you're six one. Just, you know, continue. Just go right ahead. Even for adults, we would not say that. But we're cool with this for kids. It's sick. I'm not really... I'm like you. I'm like, look, you're an adult. I might disagree with it. I don't really care. Right? Do what you want to do. As long as you don't go after the kids. But they're going after the kids, right? So to answer your question, it should just be banned across the board until uh, the age of 18. I don't see what the negative consequences would be of just making a wait. Now, the activists claim that, well, the negative consequences that, well, you know, these kids are suicidal. Some Although, of them are. Um, I mean, I, I believe that they're, I mean. Yeah, but there's no. I, there's no proof I mean, that that, yeah, go ahead. I, I mean, I guess it comes down to, do you think that there is no such thing as a truly, a, a, a person truly suffering from gender dysmorphia? And when they look in the mirror and they see their breasts developing, they actually take knives and attempt to cut them off. I mean, this is, that, is, that is happening with, I, I get it. It's not the 1.4% that are, you know, the, the tra what they call trend sexuals. I understand that there is that happening. But there, what about the people that actually are truly suffering with this mental illness? What they should do is is seek as much therapy as possible. Wait to the eighteen. That that's what I. That's truly what I believe. Yes, you should wait. Wait until you're not being pressured at school. Wait until you don't. You you can you can kind of uh, make better decisions. Children, their brains are not fully developed. Why in this instance are we just all of a sudden okay with people who are suffering from a mental illness being pushed further into the mental illness? I don't care what it is. If it's schizophrenia, if it's anorexia, if it's bulimia, if it's cutting yourself, people have delusions. They think that the police are following them. They think that they are, you know, um, that the government is after them, their houses are bugged and things like that. And they do all these things to alter their homes and put cameras everywhere. And in their mind, this is really real. Well, I have a, a, a somewhat of experience with a family member that went through this. The very first thing that good mental health uh, counselors and therapists will tell you is to never agree with the delusion. 
That was one of the very first things that they told us. Do not affirm the delusion. When you affirm the delusion, you push them further into the psychosis. You push them further into the belief and it becomes harder for them to even get out. No, you should not be pushing this, especially on children. But in what other mental health illness do we say this? Oh yeah, just push them right on in. Go right on off the dog on cliff. Just go. Is that you're going to see this stuff become more and more common and the ages are going to get younger and younger and younger. Just like what that surgeon, I mean, that- They want the ages to get younger and younger and younger. They're trying to say that they want to put the kids on puberty blockers before they even get to puberty. So this whole idea about men having an advantage in sports, okay, they're like, okay, well, if they never hit puberty, then they won't have that extra testosterone, the extra bone density and all the changes that a boy's body goes through. So they are literally talking about this right now. She is woefully ignorant on this topic to have such a strong opinion. They are already giving it to children before they're, 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 they are, they are, they want to give it to children. There are people out there who are actually giving it to children before they even hit puberty. That's what it's a puberty blocker. It doesn't want it. it they want it to not happen. And so people who have nefarious um, uh, 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 agendas, yes, they would totally do that. They don't care. They do not care. And here's this woman, you know, okay, yes, maybe we agree on some medical freedom stuff. And I'm not, you know, I don't really follow Kim like that. But, you know, maybe we agree on some medical freedom stuff. But girl, you got to get it together because this is not okay. And that doctor that we, you know, that we were talking about has implied that Hey, we don't think that there's any age, right, in which this might not be appropriate. I think that's where it's going to go if yeah. we just have a libertarian kind of, yeah. you know, stance on this. We say, well, whatever, live and let live. That's where it's going to go. And yeah, I think but, that's the problem here. No, but, but you can't, I mean, but you can't do these things for kids that are not going through puberty. I mean, they, they have to have at least gotten to the point of puberty in order to be doing any of this. So we're not going to be talking about nine-year-olds or eight-year-olds or seven-year-olds or five-year-olds. I mean, that's just not going to happen. She's lost her mind. She has literally, I don't know, just woke up today, saw the tweet that Mac did and said, I'm going to talk about something that I know absolutely nothing about. What do you mean they can't do it? They're doing it. They are currently doing it. What, what is stopping them from doing it? What is stopping it from doing it? And according to Kim, if the law stepped in to say, okay, too far, she would think that that's wrong. So what in the world would even be stopping them from doing it? Because it's their body, their choice. Because scientifically, medically, it can't. In order to give a kid puberty blockers, you do it at the time right before puberty. So that can happen a bit younger with puberty blockers, although, you know, there's some discussion on what, you know, they, they believe it's reversible, of course. These people don't even believe, these people don't even believe that boys are boys and girls are girls. Do you think they're going to really give a flying flip about when to start a puberty blocker? They don't eat these doctors and scientists and, and counselors and teachers, the affirming people. They do not even believe that men can be men are men and girls, girls, boys are boys, girls, are girls. They don't even believe that. So if they can't even believe in scientific, biological sex, what in the world would be preventing them to not give kids puberty blockers? This is just a joke. This is, this is embarrassing, girl. I completely, I'm also sympathetic to the concern that people are having about the trend growing and, and, the, and the medical professionals and the teachers and adults you know, going along with it and even saying, oh, yeah, well, if that's who you are, then that's who you are. But also, one more point on this is I feel like these same fears happen when there was a lot of discussions about gays, right? When gays are coming out and if we normalize it, then your child will suddenly fall into the fat and become gay. And that'll be, you know, and maybe there was like a trendy period where people said, well, I'm gay or I'm bi or I'm not really sure about my sexuality. And there's always this, this trend that they go through. But at the end of the day, you know, they, they, people, you know, teenagers are going to say things to rebel, but at the end of the day, they are still going to be who they are. And, you know, you can't, 
fake anything. You know, you can't fake just gender dysphoria or being gay. I mean, you, you are who you are. And if you are those things, then you are those things. And I don't think we saw like this big, in my perspective, I don't feel like there's a huge problem now once there was more people coming out being gay. And that was a giant issue, you know, in the 90s, people really concerned about it to the same level that we are concerned about this right now. Well, first of all, I'll say, you know, you say with these conversations, there's a lot of nuance. Obviously, yeah. when I say that, I'm for banning, um, you know, puberty blockers, the use of hormones and, you know, banning these surgeries. I'm talking about for that very specific reason of changing your gender. I'm not talking about for other medical reasons in which these things will be used, in which, again, it is, is actually medically necessary. I don't see these things as medically necessary if it's just to change your gender. If a kid is actually experiencing gender dysphoria, I still don't see a convincing argument as to why not just make them wait to their 18. They should just wait to 18, and then once they do that, they can have at it. They can do what they want to do. You want to chop off your penis? Go for it. Chop off your breast? Go for it. Take all the hormones you want. But I think that the disadvantages, the negative externalities of not having kids wait until they're 18 is even is more disastrous than having to wait until they're 18 because at the very least, you know, if they wait to 18, they've had more time to think about it like you've admitted, like we both know. Most of these kids grow out of this stuff. It's just right. a phase. They'll grow out of it. Give them some time. You know, kids are, you know, they're confused throughout most of their lives, right? I'm going to stop the video right here because they just pretty much reiterate the same things. And uh, Greg does go on to say that, you know, one of the solutions could be to have a, could be to have the ability to sue these doctors, teachers, administrators, counselors who are just affirming, um, which I don't think is a bad idea either. Uh, because then I think when people know that they will be on the hook for this stuff later on, they would be more careful. And there are a lot, there, there are a lot of people who are detransitioning and in total, total regret, even before they get to the uh, the actual surgeries, they started taking hormones and stuff. Their voices are different. These girls, their voice, they sound like men. Some of them have irreversible effects, lifelong, irreversible, just from the puberty blockers, not even talking about the surgeries. So this is a huge problem, huge problem. And for for people, for Kim and people who think like this, that, you know, well, it's just them. Let them do whatever they want to do. It's, it's, it's on them. You know, you can have, uh, you can say parental rights and, you know, that the person needs to be responsible. The parent needs to be responsible for the child, but we already draw those lines in society. If we know that a parent is abusing their child, we call the social services we call people that come and step in to protect the child we already do that we already have things in place that we want to protect children anyway i just wanted to come in and give my reactions to this video because i just thought it was just really crazy oh and i do want to say that i don't believe that greg has children if he does uh, you know because at, at the beginning i said you know it's always the ones with no children but he does seem to be reasonable uh, in this matter. And I don't think he has kids. I'm not sure. But yeah, I mean, we already have protections for kids in other areas. Why wouldn't we do this? I think people underestimate how evil people are, how evil doctors can be, how evil society can be. We, uh, we forget because we live in America and we have these laws. You know, most people don't really aren't, you know, we don't live in like, you know, most things are civilized. People forget how evil people can be. Oh, we're just going to let anything into society. And if you want to do it, do it. They're crazy parents too. They're crazy parents. They're crazy doctors. They're crazy teachers. They're crazy uh, psychologists. There are crazy people. There are evil people. And we have to put up guardrails so they especially cannot harm children Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. Share and subscribe. Please share and subscribe. Let's get these numbers up. Thank you so much. I will see you later. Bye-bye.